Leviticus 26 is a whole list of, of these curses and repercussions for the people, for the children of Israel not obeying God's commandments. He gives blessings and cursings right near the end of the law. And he says, okay, here, if you follow my laws, I'm going to bless you. You're going to, you know, your, your enemies are going to flee from you. You're going to live in safety. You're going to have, you know, this prosperity and, and I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people and all, you know, and everything's going to work out great. And, 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 uh, you know, he lists off all the various blessings. But then in verse 14, is where we're going to start reading in Leviticus 26, he says, but if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments. Don't get angry at God when he brings judgment. Don't get angry at God for his judgments that he gives us in the Old Testament, O Christian, that wants to ignore the Old Testament and God's law. And you want to hate that God has a death penalty on so many things. You want to hate the actual judgment that God says is righteous for people who transgress his law. You know, how about uh, you read Leviticus 26 of what God's going to do when you uh, don't do the commandments, when you despise the statutes, when your soul abhors my judgment, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant. I also will do this unto you. And look, this isn't talking about your soul being saved when he gives the law in Leviticus 26. So when to talk about the new covenant and the old covenant, you know, yes, there's a covenant that, was, that is, that is uh, changed in the New Testament with Jesus Christ being the high priest. But you know what? God still feels the same way about people who are breaking his law. He says, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. Wow, the very first thing he mentions from people diso being disobedient to his commandments, he's like, I'm going to make you real afraid. Terror is like, I'm terrified. God is instilling a shaking and a trembling in the hearts of the people that are just going to ignore uh, the word of the Lord and ignore his law. He says, I'm going to appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague. Thine, that, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. So he said, it doesn't matter how hard you work. You're going to sow and sow and sow, but you're not even going to get it. It's going to go to your enemies. Why? Because you're going to be in bondage. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. You're going to be so afraid. He's saying, one, I'm going to have you in bondage. Your enemies are just going to be able to defeat you and destroy you because you're not keeping my commandments. They that hate you, they're going to reign over you. They're going to be in power. They're going to be the ones that are, that are telling you what to do. You're going to be so afraid you're going to flee when no one's even pursuing you. These are judgments of God by being disobedient to his commands. Let's keep reading, verse 18. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. It's the same theme. It's the same theme you find throughout in other places of Scripture saying, hey, I'm going to judge you. And why is he saying, well, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to punish you even more? Because the whole point of the judgment is for them to turn back to him. That's why. He's saying, if you just listen to me, this can stop. But he says, you know what? If I do all this to you, and you still are just going to be stiff-necked, you're still not going to turn to me, then I'm going to punish you seven times more for your sins. Verse 19, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. He's going to make everything difficult for you. You know, the pride of your power. People think that, oh man, I, I'm so, I've got so much power, I'm lifted up. He's saying, I'm going to break that. I'm going to bring you down. And everything you do is going to be extremely difficult. Um, heaven being as iron, earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield or increase. Because God can cause the land not to, not to produce. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. People want to marvel today at how smart and educated we are and how far advanced we've become and we have all this machinery and modern technology and we can manipulate so many things right and and this pride of life 
that exists in a common society saying, oh man, people back in, you know, a thousand years ago, they were so ignorant and so dumb and they didn't know, it. but we're so smart and we have these smartphones and we have all this technology that can do all these things and we don't have to worry about anything because if we want something now, we've already built the equipment and machinery we can take care of ourselves. Don't think that God can't bring judgment and it happens really easily. No matter how many gadgets and electronic gizmos you have, if the food, if the ground isn't yielding food to eat, it's not going to matter how many electronic and machine gizmos you have. You're not going to be able to eat. And guess what? God controls that. God controls the rain. God controls whether or not plants are going to grow. Okay? Get right with God and don't get so lifted up in yourself that you think nothing can hurt us. Nothing can damage us. No one's going to come against us. We're great. God's blessed. us. You know what? God has blessed our country. He has. There's no doubt about that. But you know what? Judgment's coming. And I'm saying judgment's here. 